In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through a couple of problems that Acme Incorporated is having with R2. First of all, there's no password required to Telnet into this router, and they want to fix that. So we're going to fix it in a couple of ways. One, we'll walk you through how to set up a password, pretty straightforward. And then secondly, we're going to kick it up a notch and take a look at how to actually put the requirements for a username and password when somebody wants to Telnet into R2 instead of just having a global password. We'll do that, take a look at AAA, and we'll also have time to include a couple method list options as well. So let's start off with some basics. We've got uh, this router right here, R1, that we can use as a Telnet client. We're going to Telnet over into R2. Now when we Telnet to a router, we're actually coming in through a logical VTY line. And by default, all Cisco routers have VTY 0 through 4, which is five VTY lines. So by controlling and configuring those VTY lines, we can actually control how people get in to this router via Telnet. So let's go ahead and take a look at the details of R2. So we'll start on that guy. And R2 will do a show run. I'm going to do a pipe. And I'm going to do a begin line. All that does is says, please show me the running configuration. Everything after and including the word line where you see that in the config. It's just an easier way to not have to look at the entire config. So starting off, I have on the VTY lines, all the first five of them, I have the command no login. What that means is no login required. You'd think no login means you know can't come in, but no login on the VTY line says no login required. Let's test that by telnetting from R1. Now over at R2, I've got the IP address. We can telnet to 10.0.0.2. That's the IP address of R2. And sure enough, we're there. No password required, nothing whatsoever. If we type in who, that's R2 saying who's connected. It'll show us that we have a connection. Somebody's connecting from an IP address of 10.0.0.1. It also shows where they're coming in on. And that's on the left. It's VTY. Zero. So we're in on the first logical VTY connection. If we were to have somebody else telnet again, they would most likely come in on VTY1 and then VTY2 and so forth. So I'm going to type in exit and go back to the console port. Here on R2 at the console, if we type in who, it also shows us who's connected. But you'll notice that the asterisk right here shows us that we are connected to this device, online console zero, and there's nobody at the moment currently telnetted into us through the VTY lines. So let's change the rules and make someone log in. We're just going to go to line VTY configuration mode for the five VTY lines, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, for a total of five. And we'll simply change the rules. We'll say we want to require a password and require a login. So we'll say line VTY 0 through 4, and it's really simple. We're going to say login, enter. Now, login says people are now required to log in. Now, iOS, not the iPhone software, but the Cisco software, is telling us that, hey, by the way, if you're requiring people to log in, there's no default password set on the VTY lines. And as a result, if there's no password, they can't put in a password that'll work. So you'll also want to include a password. So we'll do that. We'll use password Cisco. And because it's a security thing, one, two, three. That's very, it's not a very secure password, but it is a password. Now with that configured, we can go back to our router, and from, te from R1, we can try telnetting back in, and what we would expect to see is no longer just letting us in, but rather now prompting us for that password. Okay, I'll buy that. Let's test it. So on R1, we'll telnet again to 10002, and sure enough, it's prompting us for that password. Cisco123, I'll type it in. It doesn't reflect that back on the screen for security reasons, but it did let me in. If I type in who, this shows me that I'm currently connected to this router through VTY line zero. It also shows that uh, there's somebody at the console, that's us on the other screen, um, who's sitting there as well. So great, that works. So now the problem. The password is Cisco123, and somebody put it on a post-it note and left it on their computer, and now the entire department knows what the password is. Nuts. How do we fix that? Well, we could change the password. That's not too tough. Or we could kick it up a notch. We could simply have the router require people to enter usernames and passwords to log on. 
So a couple things to do that. First of all, R2 is going to have to have locally configured usernames and passwords. And then secondly, we need to tell R2 on its VTY lines that when people try to connect, go ahead and prompt them for a username, prompt them for a password. Those are the two main steps. So let's go to R2 and configure exactly that. So at the console prompt of R2, we'll go into configuration mode and we'll create a username. Let's create username and we'll create uh, Steve. All right, and we'll give him a password as well. Password of Cisco123. Now instead of the keyword user name, I think that was a emulator game from the 80s. User name, I'll fix that. Doesn't like that either. I have to spell it right. User two ends. Doesn't like two ends. All right, it likes that. Now this keyword password right here, we could have actually used the keyword of secret instead. It also works, and that would actually keep an encrypted version, if you will, of the password in the running in the startup and running config if we save it. So that would even be a better option as well. But now we have a local user. Now, how do we train the router? to identify that when people come in, it should prompt them for a username. Because right now it's just asking for a global password. We'll go back to our configuration on the VTY lines. So we'll go to line VTY 0 through 4, and we'll simply say login, I want to use the local database, meaning I want to use my configuration of usernames and passwords to check against to authenticate users. As a result, when we press enter, and we go back to R1 to tell it into this router. R1, when we see the prompt, is now going to prompt us for a username instead of the password prompt. So now a user has to put in their information. So we'll put in Steve, we'll put in our password, Cisco123, and sure enough, now we're logged on. So we've taken it from a global password, and now we've moved it to requiring usernames and passwords. The global password is still in the config, but not used. I mean, it'll never prompt anybody for that global password on the V2I lines currently, and as a result, it's just wasting space in the config, not doing a thing. All right, so that's an example of kicking it up and allowing somebody to connect and being required for their username and password. Let me share with you now how to use something called AAA. AAA is an acronym. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to say no login local and just verify from R1 that we can now tell net with no password required. Okay, so we're in, free as a bird. AAA, Numa, AAA is all about authenticating users and authorizing users and accounting for what users do. We're gonna focus on the first of those, which is the authentication part. On a Cisco router, if we want to change the rules about how we authenticate people, we can say AAA new model. That syntax right there simply tells the router, hey, Okay, forget the old game. The new game is we are by default going to require people to put their usernames and passwords in when they log in. So this is on the VTY lines and on the auxiliary port. It does not apply to the console. I guess Cisco had too many people locking themselves out of the console before they created usernames and passwords. I don't know. But let's go ahead and, and with that one command, back at R1, now if we tell it in, check this out. So a few seconds ago, I was able to tell that in no problem. Now when I tell them in, because AAA new model is set up, it's now saying, oh, the default now has changed, and now we're going to ask for usernames. So I'll put in Steve, Cisco123, and we're in. But the cool thing is, all I had to do is simply do AAA new model, and boom, it let me in. Uh, I actually require the authentication. Now I'd like to share with you something called an authentication list. Now let me describe this, what it is. An authentication list is simply a list, and we'll call it um, we'll call it free. With AAA, you can create this list called free, or whatever you'd like to name it, and you can specify what method you'd like to, like to use. So we could say, the method list called free, I want to require no authentication whatsoever. So right now we're requiring authentication. Maybe we want to not require authentication for a certain, like for example, the V2I lines. We create a method list. We could say this method list is supposed to require no authentication whatsoever. And then we could apply the method list to the V2I lines, V2I 0 through 4. And as a result, that would take precedence over the default consideration of authenticating everybody.
It's pretty cool. It's pretty sweet. Pretty simple, actually. Let me demonstrate how to create one. So back at R2, I'm going to say for AAA authentication for character mode login, which is what we've been doing so far, I want to create a method list called free. And that method list, I'll just show you the options here. The method list can use the enable secret. It can use a group of TACX or RADIA servers. It can use the local database. It can use the password that's on the line if you want. I'm, in this case, I'm going to say none. And that's going to say basically if this method list is called upon, we're going to not require any authentication whatsoever. At the moment, people who VTY in require authentication. If we go to VTY line 0 through 4, line VTY 0 through 4, and we say uh, login authentication, and we use this name right here, a free, that right now is going to override the process of how AAA behaves. So if we did this, a debug of AAA authentication, so we can see behind the scenes of what's going on, what we're going to find is that when somebody tries to come in through the VTY line, it's going to look at this method list that's applied to those VTY lines, look at what the method is, which is none, and it's simply going to let us in without any uh, authentication required. So we could simply test that by telnetting in again. No authentication required. We got right in. And if we take a look at the debug, it's saying that basically somebody tried to connect. The method list free was associated with the VTY lines. And as a result, free said no login required. You're in like a bird. So, or as in as however bird gets in. If we wanted to change that, check this out. We could change the authentication list and we could say, I want to use the password. I want to use the, I want to use the, the method that's configured on the line. So on the line, it's, oh, we actually, I, I forget how we put the line. So let's do this. Let's say um, AAA authentication login free. Let's use the local database. That'll be fine. Because we know we have Sally and Steve and Bob and other users that we might have created in the local database. So if we go back to R1 and try that telnet one more time, now you'll notice it's prompting us for a username. And we can get in. If you type in who, the reason for that is that we are coming in through this VTY line zero logically, and we have a method list attached to that VTY line, actually zero through four. The method list at the moment says use the local database, and so that's what it did. And if we go back to the debug on R2, we'll see that once again it picked the method list called free which was requiring now the local database, meaning local authentication. So that's a little intro into the world of AAA new model and some of the behaviors that it does, and I appreciate you watching. Have a great, great day.